Hello, young artists. Today, we're going to look at the artwork of two very different artists. We're going to compare their styles, and we're going to compare the kinds of lines and shapes that they used, and we're gonna learn two new words for art class. I'm gonna draw along uh, after I show you this, and then you can put a drawing like mine or something like mine in your sketchbook. You can draw along with me later when, if you are in a Google Meet. The first word that we're gonna to learn today is shape. That's an element of art. But before you get a shape, you have to start with a mark. And you learned that every mark starts with a dot, and then you take that dot for a walk. And in this artwork by Paul Clay, we have straight lines and we have curvy lines. And when lines close around a space, you get a shape, for example, this is a curve, but it also makes a shape like a circle. And this curves to make a shape. This curves to make a shape. And this uses straight lines and it makes a rectangle. So what kinds of shapes are those? Geometric shapes are the ones that follow rules, such as a square has four equal sides. A rectangle, has four sides, two are long and two are short. We'll get to this word in a minute. Let's talk about geometric shapes. This magnet is a geometric shape. It's a circle. This is a rectangle. It's almost a square. This is a square. This is artwork by the artist Piet Mondrian and he was making art in the 1920s, 1930s, 1940s. He made this painting right here using pastel colors like pink and baby blue and strong black lines. All of the lines are straight. And when the lines touch, they make a shape and all these shapes are geometric. In this artwork, he uses all geometric shapes. You see straight lines. This artwork is very flat. One shape is up next to another shape. There's no overlapping. So this artwork looks very shape, look, looks very flat. Also, he only uses black, white, and the three primary colors. The three primary colors are red. There's just a tiny bit right there. Yellow and blue. When we mix paints together, all the other colors come from those three primary colors. Well, let's get back to geometric shapes. I'm gonna show you another one of his paintings. This one is called Broadway Boogie Woogie, and it's about New York City. If you think about all the yellow taxi cabs, that's what all these geometric shapes, these are rectangles, make me think about, and really, this could be an aerial view from up above looking down on the city. These could be the tops of buildings and these could be the streets and sidewalks. All of these shapes are geometric. That's your new word, geometric. And all of the colors are the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, and black and white. Again, this artist was named Piet Mondrian. He was from the Netherlands. Now we're gonna compare the shapes and lines that you see in Piet Mondrian's work with another artist named Henri Matisse. He was French. Henri just means Henry. We would call it Henry. Henri Matisse used very, very bright colors and lots of them. He has some geometric shapes like the frame that goes around this window that's a geometric shape, but mostly you see organic shapes. Organic shapes rarely use straight lines. And I want you to think about an organic shape as a shape from nature, like a leaf or a cloud or even a mud puddle. Those are organic shapes. We see them in the fruit on the table, the trees, out the window, the hair of the lady, 
These are all organic shapes. Let's look at another one of Matisse's paintings. This one is also inside of a house. I see a geometric shape right there that is supposed to show a painting on the red wall. And this might be a painting too. And we have, maybe that's a rug, a table, plants, flowers in a vase. But look at all the curvy, organic lines that you see in his work. Matisse made this in 1948. But when he got older, he stopped painting and he started making cutouts instead. He would pick a color paper that he wanted to use and he would make a cutout. We call that collage in art class. When you cut paper and you glue it down, I'm going to show you one of his cutouts or collages now. I tucked it in behind here. And this poster is kind of small. So I may make it bigger for you to see. This is one of my favorite pieces of art. I'm gonna bring it up close to you like that. This piece of art in French, it's called La Bête de la Mer. And that means the beast of the sea. And I like the way these shapes are geometric, yellow, blue, the green, and they're stacked on top of each other. It makes me think of deep, deep water in the ocean. Then when I look at the shapes on top, I see lots of organic or nature shapes. I think that looks like a fish. I think this shape looks like the shiny part on the waves of the water. This could be a snake or an eel. I really like this spiral shape. And I like these plant-like shapes that look like, they look like leaves or seaweed. And then I like all the different colors that he has used in this cutout or collage. I'm gonna put it back and I'm gonna show you one that I drew and I'm gonna draw some. I'm gonna take a dry erase marker and draw on the dry erase board. And I'm going to practice making some organic shapes. I bet you already know how to make a circle and a rectangle and a square. I want you to practice these shapes. They're a little bit harder to control. The things about these shapes is they don't follow rules. So I don't need a ruler. I don't need to trace anything. I just need to start drawing. I start with my dot and I take it for a walk, but I'm gonna take it for a very curvy walk. And I'm going to make a shape kind of like that, like a leaf. I might make another shape that has points to it. It might be a spiky kind of leaf and it might come out like that. It's really hard to repeat that shape because it's so unique. I'm gonna make another one. like this, and then I might add another shape in between. That kind of looks like an upside down heart. And I'm just gonna start filling up my space with organic shapes. I like the way Matisse used lots of different colors. And some shapes go behind another shape. Now remember, when I showed you Mondrian's work, I said it looked very flat. If you add a little bit of overlapping, such as this, then your drawing will not look as flat. Now I am not making this very colorful. I'm just using one color. You might just be using a pencil in your sketchbook, and that's okay. Let me show you a drawing that I made in my sketchbook that's kind of like Matisse. It uses geometric shapes and organic shapes. I colored some in and others I did not colored in. I used a marker so that you can see it really well. And this is my drawing that helps me practice making geometric shapes such as rectangles and squares and organic shapes such as spirals and these wiggly shapes and plant-like shapes. So this is what we're gonna work on this week. Get your pencil and sketchbook ready. You can meet me at a Google Meet and draw along with me. If you can't do that, 
you can draw in your sketchbook at a time that's convenient for you. And I'll see you next time, young artists. Bye.